Let's get good. I am the gamer under development and this is Monster Train. I'm back still working on some of my unlocks here because I don't get to play the game as much as I'd like to. Plus, I'm not the best at it yet. I'm working on it. I'm getting better. So today we're going to be taking out the Stygian Guard and the Umbra because they are the only two factions that I have not capped out. the Well, they're not the only two, but I've capped out the Awoken. I've capped out the Hellhorned. I haven't finished the Stygian Guard, the Umbra, or the Melting Remnant yet, although the Melting Remnant is close because they're one of my favorites. So we're going to do Stygian and Umbra today, Umbra being my lowest level one, which is surprising because I actually really like them. I'm still on Covenant rank 4 because, like I said, I'm not the best at this game, still learning. So let's go ahead and take this out, see if we can unlock another Covenant rank by completing a run. I got a good feeling about this one, guys. Uh, ow. Okay, that's actually a really good start. This is a good start. I like this start. Uh, preserve is not incredible, but it's also not terrible because it doesn't go back into the deck. It sits in your hand until you use it. I guess then it does go back into the deck. But Antumbra Assault is one of the best targeted removal cards we can get for the cost. It also has the chance to give us Uncommon and Rare Morsels, which is very nice. It plays into the spell damage theme of the Stygians. And then Titan's Tooth is a great way to do AoE damage without necessarily paying for it because of offering. We don't have a way to trigger the offering on this yet, so that's something we'll be looking for. The boss is going to be Seraph the Diligent. The end is near. The Great Trader will devour your spells. You better bring more of them if you hope to succeed. Okay, so Seraph is going to consume the first spell that we play each turn. That's really not that big of a deal because if we get the right setup, it'll just cause us to loop our deck faster, which is a good thing. Let's go see what we get artifact-wise. At the end of the turn, Frozen cards are reduced to zero cost. Okay, that combined with our Preserve right here is actually really, really good. When a card with Consume is played, deal 30 damage to the front unit. This is just extra bonus 30 damage. We don't have anything with Consume yet, though, so there's really no triggers. I think we're going to go for the Titan's Claw. Could have got a better start on Artifacts. Not very happy with the Artifacts we got there, but I guess we'll make do. Um, so I'm told that the damage spells cast on this floor costing minus one is generally one of the better ones. In this case, since we don't have a way to trigger Titan's Tooth with an offering, I'm inclined to agree, but I do also really like the Apply Frostbite 10, especially if you put it on the ground floor with something beefy in front of it, because that Frostbite will wear the enemies down as they go up the floors. I'm gonna go for this one on this run though, because I do think this is gonna be better for us right now. It'll have a more immediate effect on the very first round of combat we go into. Uh, this is the Guardians of Light. These Disciples have been granted special power over the Light of Seraph, making them harder to kill than other Disciples. Oh goody. Uh, we can also give all of our non-boss enemies for attack if we'd like an additional unit draft, which I kind of want right now, because we didn't get the strongest artifact and I'd like to fill out our deck a little bit more. Uh, so what we're going to be dealing with here though is this guy will have 7 attack, this guy will actually have 8 attack, which means he's capable of one-shotting our tankiest units right now, which is our train steward. That's not really a great thing, but how much health does he have? He only has one health, and we have quite a bit of targeted removal. However, some of our removal isn't targeted, and we could get blocked off by this guy, causing this guy to wipe out whatever's in front of him. Uh, so there's definitely some danger in giving them this trial bonus. I'm not sure if it's worth it or not. I feel like it's probably not, but I also feel like because of the amount of damage spells we have, there is a way to kind of play around it. Plus, we can chump block with Shade Splitters, so I think we're going to do it. Hopefully, this works out. I might end up paying for that one, guys. Giving them a trial where our tankiest unit dies in one shot isn't really the best idea, in my opinion. But it's also not terrible when we have things like Titan's Tooth to back us up here. Now, what we can do here, because of the way this works is we can give Titan's Tooth Frozen, which will make it zero cost next round. Uh, in the meantime, though, we do have to deal with this guy having seven attack, which means that it will straight out kill Tethys Titan's Bane if we do play Tethys. Hmm. So, I mean, in that instance, it's almost like we just play this anyway. And we kill this healing guy, and we do a bit of damage to that guy as well as giving him Frostbite 10. That actually seems like probably the best play we have overall. I don't think there's anything better we can do here. Like, if we put down Tethys, then we can play this for two, but Tethys will still die. Uh, but we will actually have the energy left to go ahead and do a Shade Splitter, which would give us a morsel to maybe Chump Block. Let's do that. Let's do that. I think that actually works out okay here. 
Uh, we are going to have to waste a morsel to do it, but I think that's fine. We get an extra 10 damage there and the frostbite, so that seems like we got the most damage possible out of that. Now we're in a little bit more of a precarious position here, though, because we have to make sure this guy dies or we're going to lose our guy. So what I'm going to do, uh, just because we can, is we're going to Frozen Lance twice. Titan's Tooth here, and then put down a Train Steward to tank for us here. Now that Train Steward is going to take almost all his health and damage, but at the end of the day, that's not too bad right now. And unfortunately, I did miss out on the bonus gold there, which might have been worth more than actually doing this trial, to be 100% honest. I guess we'll find out. It really depends on what unit we get. All right, that guy's going to die. That's perfect. Brief respite usually means that we're going to get the boss the round after this. Now, what's unfortunate here is I don't think we can actually kill him with Antumbra Assault. Maybe we can, though. Let's see. Uh, so if we go for a double Antumbra Assault right here, we can actually kill him with the Antumbra Assault. We can gain a couple morsels for the bottom floor. I think that's a good idea. Let's go for that. Die. Okay, so with a couple morsels here, we can put some more health on our frontline guy, some more attack on our frontline guy, and then hopefully next round we can put down another train steward in front of him. That would be kind of nice. Yeah, that's what I thought. We're already on the boss. Uh, this is going to be a very, very interesting floor, I feel like. Okay, that guy's dead. This is actually pretty good for us right now. 87 damage, so it won't quite kill him, but we'll get close. Uh, and how many train stewards do we have left in the deck? Not very many, but we do have some more damage spells left, so I think it'll be okay in the long run. Uh, we may actually end up taking damage on our pyre, but I hope not. I think that frostbite is going to add up a lot over time. The fact that he gives us that purge spell is kind of painful, but not the end of the world. Uh, definitely want to play this. Definitely want to play that to avoid damage on the pyre if we can. Throw a little more damage on him. We won't get much more out of that. But the good news is he will lose about half of his health here. And that means if we can just put something in front of him on the next floor, we should be able to prevent him from reaching the pyre. Or we could just go for the kill here. And I think we have it. Uh, we have 18 damage right there. If we go for this... That's, that's annoying. So he's going to take four, right? So if we go 12 here, then he'll still survive to hit the pyre. If we go all in, we'll lose three health on our pyre from the weight of contrition, but he will die from the frostbite, which is fine. And dead. All right, that works. Three damage on the pyre, not a bad start. We did get our bonus from that, so that's kind of awesome. Let's see what we get though. Units are gonna be important here. Uh, Glacial Seal is not the best, mainly because of that two cost. I don't really like the two cost. Titan's Gratitude is great though. One to deal 30 to the front enemy and discard a card to trigger offering. That's really nice. Uh, Ice Tornado is also great. Three times we do that damage. That's really, really strong and I'm inclined to take it because you can kill the front unit and then kill two more units with it, which is very strong. But I feel like Titan's Gratitude is better here just because of the energy cost and the fact that it triggers offering. Um, this is actually a really interesting card. So I'm, I'm told that X cost cards are generally not that good, but I think this one is quite nice because legitimately if you put one energy into it and you kill a unit, you will get back two energy. So it's actually an energy refund, which is really nice. Uh, making of a morsel adds a morsel miner to your hand. That's not great. Morsel miners are really nice, but that's just not incredible. I feel like mine collapse is probably the best here because we're just going for straight damage spells. But packed morsels is also pretty decent. We don't have anything to feed those two yet, really. Like, we don't have anything that gains from eating stuff yet. So I think we'll go for that. Ooh, this is nice. This is very nice. Uh, this is one of the better tanky cards we can get. And both of these are good damage cards for us. I think we'll take the tanky guy, though, just to put in front of our champion for right now. That seems like a good option. Um, let's go ahead and... Oof. One second, guys. Okay, sorry, just needed to check a thing real quick. Oh, I didn't mean to go this way, but we went this way. Uh, this will give us a chance to get a nice Umbral unit, though, which isn't a bad idea. Alloyed Construct. I've had some bad luck with this in the past, but it is actually quite a strong card. Morsel Master isn't really great, in my opinion. Like, he's good because he only takes up one spot, and he does have 10 health and attack, so that's decent. Uh, Alloyed Construct is really good, but it's only really good if it's on, like, the very top floor, and you're able to pump it up, which isn't impossible for us right now. Let's take it. Let's take it and see what we can do with it. Uh, we can upgrade a unit with Endless. That is extremely powerful right there. 
Uh, extremely, extremely powerful, especially depending on which unit we put it on. Now, if we put it on the Alloyed Construct, that would be really, really nice. He'd be able to come back if he dies. I wonder if he retains, like, bonuses to attack and defense if you do that. That could be really good on its own. Uh, being able to bring this guy back is also really nice, but the armor is obviously going to be gone before he dies. So I feel like putting it on him makes the most sense. Although he's not really going to die that much unless, like, something goes horribly wrong. That's tough. That's really, really tough. Let's go with this... Ah, I don't know which one of these I want to put it on, to be honest. Endless isn't the best option for us right now in general. I guess we put it on him because having a tank that comes back means that we only need that one tank. Uh, that does mean we do not have enough gold to get any of the other bonuses, which is kind of painful. I actually went the wrong way here. Like, that was a misclick because I was coming back into the window from pausing OBS for a moment. Um, okay. Disciple Conduits. Conduits use their knowledge of your train to ascend more quickly than other disciples. Take them out before they reach your pyre. So these are the guys that have haste. We have to kill the haste units. That shouldn't be a problem. We've been killing units before combat quite a bit so far. Uh, Spikes 3 is actually a little bit of an issue. But how much of an issue is the real question. Like, Spikes 3 is a problem because we only have 5 health on Tethys Titan's Bane, and Tethys Titan's Bane does attack units. So, it's not a great thing for us. For 75 coins, I think we'll pass. We'll pass and we'll focus on getting the little Cherub guy because that's 50 coins right there. And we missed the Cherub guy on the last attempt. So, I mean, it, it really does pay off overall to just do it that way. Uh, here, we actually have a really, really clean setup. I dig this quite a bit. Everybody dies, and we also get a train steward down. I would have liked to have put the alloyed construct down on the top floor right away, but i it's not worth it if we're able to clear that whole floor like that. Um, this is quite nice. We're definitely putting this down. I think the other thing we'll do is we'll come up here and we'll spend one. Will that work? That will work. We'll spend one right here to ensure we kill this. Got our 50 gold. Then we'll come down here and we'll mine collapse one of these one health units, preferably the one that gives them haste. That'll give us back two energy. So now if we want to, we can Titan's Tooth or we can Shade Splitter here. I'm gonna Titan's Tooth because that'll give us some more armor and kill the entire floor. Seems good. A brief respite because we needed it at this point. Uh, we're just gonna cast as many spells as we can here to get as much armor as we can on that unit. And then just because we have them, we're gonna do this. There's really no reason not to do that. Okay. Make him a little stronger. I really wish that we'd gotten that bot guy out so that we could uh, put some more damage on him. It looks like he is buried in the deck, though. We're not going to see him for a hot second. That's okay. Let's go ahead and kill the frontline unit with this. Kill the backline unit with this, which will also give us two more morsels, which we will gladly put on this guy to beef him up. And then we'll go ahead and Titan's Gratitude here, not caring about what we discard. We have enough energy left that if we wanted to, we could play another unit here, but we're already full. So what I'll do is I'll put that unit down on the third floor just because. Seems good. All right, let's see what happens. I didn't look at how much damage we're going to do to this guy on this first floor. We're not going to kill him, though. I strongly doubt we kill him here. I mean, we'll probably take him down a good bit, though. Yeah, so he's at about 55. We should be able to kill him pretty easily from here, honestly. Uh, especially with this guy getting endless, so we can get him back right away. Um, what do we want to give Frozen to? Sure, give it to the Train Steward. Not that it matters all that much, because we likely won't use that Frozen. Instead, we're going to be looking to cast as many spells as we possibly can and put units down on the floor. Uh, this is only going to do three damage, but it's less about that and more about getting extra armor. Seems good. Having Endless on this guy is working out a lot better than I thought it would, to be 100% to be honest. Being able to get just that little bit of extra armor does buy more time for our units to attack, and here we're in a perfect setup. Uh, Alloyed Construct not doing a whole lot for us this, this particular game or uh, battle, but that's fine. There we go. Let's get those. Shade Splitter to get some more armor, and that's really what this is the story of. This is the story of this guy getting a ton of armor and staying alive to tank for stuff. Quite nice there. We got through. No damage to the pyre. 50 coins. Clan pack. Allied clan pack. I'd say I'm getting better, guys. I think I'm getting better at this. Uh, Titan's Tooth is not one that I'm really in a hurry to pick up. 
Flash Freeze isn't bad because of the Frostbite, but I feel like Frenzied Swarm is extremely powerful, so I'm going to take that. Um, and then here we have Prismal Dust, which is also extremely powerful. Another X cost card that I actually do prefer because it basically nullifies three attacks. Uh, Pack Morsels also very, very good here because we can play them for zero. However, they are consumed, which is problematic. I think I'd rather take one of these over the Pack Morsels at the moment because this also doesn't really affect the board. I guess it could because you do get some more Morsels and they're typically better Morsels, but I feel like Primal Dust here is excellent for boss rounds. So we're going to go ahead and take that, and let's see what our options are this time. We have 110 gold. I really feel like we want to go upgrade our spells a little bit, but at the same time, if we can put some upgrades on the Alloyed Construct and make him into a house, that would be incredible for us. Hmm. That's a tough call. Here we also get an Umbra unit, which potentially means we get somebody that actually gains from eating morsels. That's something we don't really have going right now as far as our synergies go. Now, at the same time, that does also... Well, I guess we have him. That does kind of split our synergies, so it's almost more beneficial to go over here and get another Stygian and try to find maybe one that gets additional damage. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, our champion is a one... Yeah, it's a one capacity unit. I feel like going over here is actually the better choice. Just because if we were able to get like a good damage unit here, that's not great. That's also not particularly great. Uh, this is okay though, I mean, at least with this. Oh, wait a minute, this is actually really, really, really good, guys. This is really good if we put it on the same floor as this guy, because we can just draw through our entire deck and play all of our spells for free. Um, but it gets minus five health every time, so we'll want to put more health on it and maybe some attack as well. I'm going to take that. I think we can do a lot with it. And then we have Rail of the Covenant, Litter the Landscape. One of the Rail Spikes still contains some lingering power. You could take it and use it on one of your units or enhance your own magical prowess. Okay, so we can enhance a unit, upgrade a unit with plus 20 attack and plus 20 defense, or plus 20 health, and add Purge. That seems really bad. Increase magic power by 20, add Purge, and reduce cost to zero. Um, this could actually be potentially good if we're getting rid of a spell that we don't really want anymore. Spells like Frozen Lance, for example, are not incredibly good. I mean, they're good with, with what we've got going now, though, which is what makes it problematic. Let's enhance a unit and maybe get rid of one of our train stewards. I think that's actually probably a better idea. Then we just get a super heavy hitting train steward. You take the rail spike and apply its remaining power. It seems only to be effective for this final use as it disintegrates in your hand. Seems fine. I think with that, we can at least have that heavy hitter as a backup should we need it. Um, ideally putting him down... Oh, wait a minute. When this unit dies, return it to the top of the draw pile. Once played, this card is removed from your deck for the rest of the run. Okay, so I don't think that Endless will actually counter that. I wish it would, but I don't think it will. However, I think Endless on this is just kind of ridiculous, so we're going to get it. Um, that seems really, really strong to me. Upgrade a unit with attack or with additional health. I think what we'll do is we'll put some attack on the Offering Monument as well, so it actually does something while it's out there. Uh, health might be a better option if we're going to just play through all of our spells, but until we know that for sure, getting that extra attack on there means that it's never a dead card, which is kind of nice. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, here we go, guys. This is going to be very interesting if we can make this work. Plating Seal, uh, this is Daedalus, the heavily armored creations protect this ex-professor in his quest to safeguard Seraph and the Winged. Uh, Daedalus is the only unit they actually show us, 9 attack, 450 health. He has the bomb thing, constructed explosives enter with a damage shield. That's actually very annoying. The damage shield on the constructed explosives is very, very bad. Uh, it means that we can't just one-shot them, which is problematic in and of its own right. So let's go like this. One, zero, kill everything. Um, most importantly, kill the things that do the most damage. That goes away, we get a couple of these guys, we're gonna put them down, because then we can pump our frontline guy. Like, the nice thing here is that both of these guys give attack, which is really good for pumping our frontline guy. And we get a little bit of incant there. Pretty, pretty great round for us to start off with. We didn't really take any damage. We did quite a bit of damage. We get two gorges there. And that, well, not gorges technically, because he doesn't have a gorge trigger. Uh, this is problematic, because now if we place something here to fight these guys, it's just going to get wrecked by that. So, what we're going to do instead is we're going to put our offering monument here. And then we're going to Antumbra Assault the damage dealer again. That's going to give us an incant, which will trigger us being able to draw. Uh, here we can go ahead and. 
Oh, there's so much to do, guys. There's so much left to do. It's, oh, okay. So choices, we can Frenzied Swarm here, which will stun both of these guys, meaning this guy won't do any damage at all. Uh, we could put down the Alloyed Construct with, I think we do that. I think we go like this, uh, just to give the Alloyed Construct a little bit of fuel. In fact, I might do two of them here, or we could do one here to give a little more attack power to our bottom row guy, uh, which does give us a little bit more clearing power. Which one did I give him? I gave him four attack. This one's also four attack. Let's do this, let's do this. We can give him another fuel next round and that should work out fine. The biggest problem with these guys is they need one round to get fuel in before they can actually attack. So as long as we're drip feeding him one unit every round, we're fine. And now he should be able to clearly wipe out those guys based on his attack and his double strike. Uh, and now we're in trouble because we didn't actually get another unit to feed him, which is what we were kind of hoping for. Let's go ahead and use our preserve here to give this frozen. And then, oh, we're in a bad spot here. He's going to be eating 10 no matter what we do. Like, that's just fact of life right there. Um, I mean, honestly, 9 damage, that's not going to kill anything. We'd like to kill something so we can at least get a little bit of... Hmm... Hmm. This is this is where we have to think about it for a minute. Uh, I'm going to actually put this guy behind him because he has less health, which means that we can get a little more damage in here. We are only leaving ourselves one spot to play a consumable unit, but that is what it is. Now, I'd like to do some more damage to this guy to set him up. Actually, that's not a bad idea. We don't kill him if we do this, but at the same time, it, it is kind of a bad idea because it means that whatever spells we get next round won't necessarily be relevant to that. However, we could also do this and then just put two of these down and he'll die anyway. I like that. That seems good. And it buys us an extra round to get some food down for that guy on top, the alloy guy. Seems pretty good. Nice little clear there. Nice clear there. Whatever row gets the bomb next turn is going to be rough though. I mean, we did eat the bomb on this row this turn, and it wasn't the end of the world. So, like, it's not that we can't survive the bomb. It's just that the bomb's not great for us. Um, okay. So this is intriguing for a couple different reasons. I feel like we want to... definitely cast this, because that's going to give us a morsel that we can put up here to fuel him. Now we could spend one energy here to go ahead and break the damage shield on that, but I don't know that that's actually necessary. Well, it is or we're not going to kill it. It's probably going to go first and explode anyway, though, unless we do enough damage to kill it in, like, one go, which we're not going to do. So, we have other choices to make in that case. Uh, that is unfortunate, but we're only going to lose 10 health there, so it's not the end of the world. Let's go for a Shade Splitter here. It's going to give us some fun stuff. We could actually use Prismal Dust if we wanted to to prevent the damage he's taking, but it doesn't really feel like that's worthwhile to me. Uh, we don't have another spot to put one of these guys down there, so we'll put him right here. And then we have... Like, we have this on lock, so the real goal here is to throw whatever we can before we throw this so that we have a better chance of hitting Titan's Tooth. Because we really want to hit Titan's Tooth with that. That's our main goal. So I guess we'll hit that. Of course, now we get this, so we'll go ahead and use it, and we will actually freeze out the Prismal Dust so we can hold that for the boss round, unless it gets discarded. Play that. This is where we're getting that benefit off of the Offering Monument. That's that's what I was actually trying to build this around, and it's working out quite nicely, to be honest. Uh, we could even Shade Splitter here, which will give us another draw, kill this unit, and give us access to another Morsel. That's not a bad idea. Uh, additional two attack and life steal, and now we also have this which does zero damage right now, unfortunately. Now I guess we just throw this and hope for the best. And we got the best, that was perfect. That was exactly what we wanted to happen. Ending our turn, uh, 10 damage on our big guy there. It's a problem, but it's not the end of the world. All right, very nice. We lose one unit there. That's not really a problem because these are our train stewards. They're not big deal units. And we're also holding the super train steward for when we need him. Okay. Oh boy, look at what we drew, guys. I wonder where that came from. 
So we'll do this. We'll get another card. Um, we have an Antumbral Assault here that we can do for free. I feel like doing that right here makes the most sense. That's going to give us a couple more of these guys. We're going to go for additional... Let's go for additional attack here because we're holding Prismal with Frozen, which means that whenever we need to, we can put a big damage shield on this guy and just let him unload. Um, Antumbral Assault's not going to kill that. It's not going to kill that. It's not going to... I mean, it'll bring this to death range. Well, it's already in death range. Okay. So in that case, it's really not doing anything unless we have another damage spell. Uh, Frenzied Swarm also not doing a whole lot unless we have another damage spell. But casting it is still good because we do get an incant trigger. So let's do that and let's do Frenzied Swarm here. Although doing Frenzied Swarm here is actually a risk because we could lose Prismal Dust or Train Steward, which is not ideal. I mean, honestly, losing Train Steward doesn't hurt us that much, but losing Prismal Dust feels like a bad idea to me. So I think we'll just wait. Get wrecked. Love it. He gets fueled up a little bit more. 33 attack times two, which is wonderful. Uh, I don't think there's really any way that Daedalus actually, like, gets through here. I don't think it's possible at this point. Um, I think that Daedalus for sure dies before he hits the pyre. I'm not entirely sure how much he dies before he hits the pyre, but he does die before he hits the pyre. Let's go ahead and cast this just to get an incant trigger. I mean, sure, we can put it on this, but we'll cast that this round. So I guess we put it on a Shade Splitter that we're probably going to cast this round anyway. Cast the other Shade Splitter for an incant trigger and another Antumbra Morsel. We'll put the Morsel up here to buy this guy a little bit more health. Um, and then down here, or right here rather, we'll do this for one. That's actually not going to kill him. I should have been a little more careful with that because now we're not going to gain our two energy off of this, which is actually going to be somewhat problematic here. Uh, Titan's Gratitude does seem like a good deal here. Gonna go ahead and clear that frontline unit and set us up for this. We did lose our big beefy uh, train steward, so that's okay. We have one energy left. I mean, I guess at that point we just mind collapse this guy for a little bit of extra damage because it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, let's do that. He's going to get through the first floor for sure. He's obviously still going to take a pretty good amount of damage in doing so. That's fine. I really... The only thing I regret is that we couldn't apply Frostbite to him on this first floor. That would have been a really, really nice thing just to set up some damage as he goes up. Didn't happen, though, so we're not going to cry over spilt milk. We're just going to go for it. Um, here we have some very interesting options because we now have the Guard of the Unmarked and the Offering Monument that we can put down here and cast spells into in order to get some triggers. I think we'll do that. Uh, the day's trigger here isn't the greatest. This one's pretty good, though. Doesn't really do enough for us. I'm gonna go ahead and Shade Splitter here because we do need another morsel to refuel our mechanical guy up top. Now, I'm a little bit concerned with the way that fueling this guy works. I don't know if he burns a fuel every round or every time he attacks. Negates the effect of inert for one more turn. Okay. So I don't know if he'll, like, hit once and then lose that and then won't be able to hit Daedalus again. But if that happens, then he's basically unusable and I made a huge mistake. Hopefully it's not like that, because that would be really unfortunate. Um, wow, this is an interesting choice for us. So I do feel like putting... We don't have the space to put that guy down. That choice just got a lot easier. Uh, damage shielding him seems like the best overall idea. He takes three hits and does not go down. Yeah, I think we do that. Uh, it's still not going to kill him, though, it looks like, which is unfortunate. I would have expected it to do so. He doesn't swing. What in the name of... Why would you design that like that? He's basically unusable. Like, that's actually frustrating. If we die right here, I'm going to be so salty. Oh my gosh. Okay, we barely make it through because of the way that the fuel mechanic works. That's super garbage. That's super garbage. I'm actually disappointed that we wasted an Endless on that guy. Uh, we definitely want Shroud Spike. It's one of the only ways we can actually make him any good. Uh, you're junk. You're flat out junk and we don't like you. This unit is really good though. I think, well, if we do that though, we're ending up splitting up things that we need to gorge and that seems like a really bad idea. Here we get spell weakness applied, which isn't as bad of an idea, but it is a sweep unit. It has some decent health, so I think it's okay. 
I guess we go with that. Uh, we'll take capacity here for certain. Capacity is going to be a big, big help. Uh, and it looks like we basically need to feed every one of our morsels to the mechanical unit to make him any good. Because otherwise that fuel mechanic is plain out junk. So we could duplicate something, which could be good. We could get another artifact, which is probably better. We also get some more coins and some more pyre health on this side. I don't think this is even an option. I think we have to take this side because of the way that last round went. First time each turn an enemy unit dies, add two morsel units to hand. That's really good. Enemy unit enters with frostbite too. That's also really good. Oh wow, that'll kill any unit with one health after its first round. So that's particularly strong. Uh, at least early on, that's particularly strong. This one is also very good because it guarantees that we have at least two morsels every turn because then an, an enemy unit almost always dies. Um, so that actually helps make this guy less junk. I guess we go with the Shade Lamp just because otherwise that guy is kind of garbage. I still maybe should have taken the other one, though. Um, here we have the ability to go for minus two energy on spells, or we can also apply Frostbite. I feel like being able to apply Frostbite is going to be an additional thing that helps us, so we're gonna go for that. Man, I'm really... Every time I see this guy, I'm like, he's really good, but he's really just not. Clipped Infiltration. These clipped have enlisted conduits to help them ascend your train more quickly. Remove the conduit, and the clipped will become more vulnerable. Uh, Ancient Hate. Enemy units enter with Spell Shield 2. Not a chance. Absolutely no chance. Uh, so 595, 1 and 1 with haste. So killing this enemy off is going to be huge. That's where Frostbite might have been helpful, but the thing is, Frostbite wouldn't have killed it until it already gave the haste benefit, so there's really nothing lost there. Um, this guy is actually quite terrifying with the gain 5 attack resolve thing. That's huge. That's huge. Glad I didn't turn on that trial, because we would have gone down real hard with that trial. Not being able to spell damage units would have been the end of us. Um, let's do... I want to say this. And then kill this off. But that's going to allow them to potentially go to the third floor, which isn't good for us. Although we could just kill that guy off on the third floor, and this guy has one damage. Um, this will reduce the amount of damage we take the most, which is actually probably the most optimal thing we could do here while well, this will prevent them from going up additional floors. But we'll take a, a lot more damage. I think we'll do this just to preserve our health a little bit more. We did get a ton of morsels from that. That's actually a really, really cool thing for us right here. Uh, they are going to jump straight to the third floor now, which is somewhat problematic. Let's do that to get a little more damage on that guy. And this unit's going to die from the sweep. I didn't even think about that. The sweep is going to clear that unit, so we're fine. Uh, this actually works out kind of perfect. Because what we can do is we can just stack this row. And now when we do get the Robo guy, we'll just put him in front of these and he can eat all those morsels. We'll just spend the entire game fueling him up because otherwise he's functionally useless. Uh, Frostbite, extremely powerful here. Oh, look, and we get the bonus of killing that thing. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we're freezing this. We're freezing this for sure. This thing should die to our morsels, it will, and that means that all we need to do is deal with this floor because this guy's gonna walk into a world of pain. Let's just go ahead and kill that off and get ourselves four more morsels. We can't actually put them on that row, which is somewhat unfortunate. What we can do, though, is we can put them on this row. And what I'm gonna do is give him damage shield here, and then probably put this guy down and give him... I wanna say just more defense or maybe more attack. Let's go more attack. Okay, that actually works out pretty well. I mean, honestly, give him everything. We're not going to have those morsels next round anyway, so give him everything. There we go. We just have to fuel this guy up to high heaven. Like, he needs to be non-stop fueled to be any use. Uh, but this is actually working out pretty well so far. Adding frostbite and spell weakness to enemies is a very, very powerful thing for us. Uh, we are able to get our Offering Monument down on this floor. This is a perfect bottom floor for us right now. Guys, this is looking really, really up. Like, I'm actually super excited at this point. Uh, let's go ahead and Titan's Tooth here. We don't really need to, but that's kind of expensive. Let's cast this, uh, see what else we can pull. Not a bad pull, but I do think Titan's Tooth is a good play right here, mainly because it's going to allow us to kill something. We're going to get our 
Well... Yeah, let's do this. It'll trigger, it'll give us our two morsels, which we want to keep fueling this guy. So that's great. Um, and then, what else do we want to do? Really nothing, because we can't, so that's fine. Nom 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 nom. Look at him just fueling up. So I, I think that's the real problem with that, guys. You basically... And I mean, it's not a problem. It actually kind of works out with us getting this and having a deck that doesn't have anything else that gorges. It means that we can focus all of our gorge stuff on that guy, and that's extremely powerful. Um, here, I feel like we could Frenzied Swarm. We do have a chance to discard something that would be not good for us. So, I don't... Hmm. Is it worth, guys? Is it worth? I mean, I think it kind of is. Let's do it. Oh, it's discard your whole hand. I'm so bad at this game. I'm so bad at this game. I can't believe that I just did that, guys. Oh my gosh. Is this actually going to work out, though? How? I, I don't deserve this to work out, but it looks like it's actually kind of going to work out. I, I, I don't even know what happened. I don't even know what happened. I did not deserve for that to work out. That was a huge, huge mistake. Like, that was a really bad play. And it totally worked out, and I don't know how. But I'll accept it. Oh my gosh, that's that's just insane. A brief respite, that means that our next round will be against the boss. Uh, gonna go ahead and put some more morsels down there. And Tumber Assault is not gonna kill anything here. Popping these off isn't really gonna do a whole lot either, so I'm just gonna pop them off to get a little more draw and to also pump up our armor guy right here and then from there we have three left i do think it's a decent idea to play that but i also feel like we kind of want to play this to get some more morsels yeah more morsels is the the order of business at the moment um with this guy we could put him on the top row with the well no we can't we don't have the capacity yet hmm decisions decisions i guess right here we just and Tumbrel Assault twice? Oh, we did have Spell Weakness on that guy, so we hit a little bit harder with that. Nom 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 nom. Look at him now, guys. He has plenty of fuel. As long as we keep fueling that guy, we'll be fine. Uh, and we really don't want this row to hold out for very long, because if they do... Oh, he's dead. What? How... I'm so confused. I am so... Oh, it's the Frostbite, guys. It's the Frostbite. Okay. Okay, that makes more sense. I was like, how is he dead? This doesn't make any sense to me at all. Uh, so we do that. We Shade Splitter here. We get a Morsel, which we're going to throw to this guy just to give him more fuel. Um, and then, honestly, we'll just do that. And yeah, he's dead. That's crazy. For a minute, I was like, how, how do we kill him? I don't understand. Uh, but we kill him because of the Frostbite. The Frostbite stacks every time our champion hits. So even though... Oh, and he doesn't gain the 5 attack until between rounds. Okay. So I sometimes I'm confused about how that, that stuff triggers because of the way that the stuff interacts. Like, Fuel uses every time they swing, even though it says it removes inert for the round. And yet his resolve doesn't trigger until the very end of the round when the floor is won. So that's, that's a little bit confusing in my opinion. Okay. Collect some stuff. Drain is actually really, really good for when we get to Seraph. Uh, that's honestly the biggest bonus right there, is that it helps us with Seraph. Send all enemy units on this floor and apply Days 3. Uh, that seems okay if you're, you're specifically weakening everything before they go to the Pyre, but that's not really what we're going for. I feel like this is probably our best bet. I want to take that just for Seraph, because Seraph is such a pain. Return Consume Morsel units to your hand. That could be good. That could be better. That's actually really, really, really good. Um, oof. So many choices. I think I'm gonna go for this. I do think that that's actually better. Just giving us additional capacity on a floor is really powerful. Uh, we can get some more Pyre Health, upgrade our spells and go for Concealed Caverns, or we can go for some more Trinkets get a free artifact and some extra coins. Uh, and the next boss should be... Is there a way to tell? I, like... This is this is all on me, guys. I'm, I'm super good at this game. Um, 
Which ring are we? Okay, so we're actually in this ring. A foe awaits you, but it doesn't tell me Seraph the. Okay, it, it's Seraph. It's. Or no, it's not Seraph because that's the final boss. I guess it's not going to tell me until. Okay, here we go, here we go. Oh, this is just a foe. It doesn't tell us. Fell is right here. So it's one of the, the randomly generated ones. So we won't know who we're up against until we get there. Um, we would have over 300 and something coins if we go this direction. The real question is whether or not I think our pyre health is okay here. And I think our pyre health is going to be fine. So I'm going to take this just because there's an opportunity for us to get a lot more relics here. When you summon your first morsel unit each turn, draw one card. At the start of turn, add a common or uncommon morsel to your hand. This seems really good for pumping that big guy at the top. This one seems really good for helping us draw through the deck a little bit faster. Uh, I'm not sure which one's actually better at this point. This is actually really good because of one thing, guys. If we cast spells until this dies, because of Endless, it goes back on top of the deck, and we can play this. We can use a Morsel with this to draw it back up and then continue casting spells. Um, so there is potentially an infinite combo there. Uh, the Abandoned Antumbra is also still very good. Oh my gosh, there's a cat at my toes again. Uh, let's go with the Mask of the Penumbra here. I think that's probably going to allow us to combo off, which is a little more powerful. Friendly units enter with Lifesteal 2. 50% chance to apply Silence when an enemy unit enters the train. This is so, so good. Uh, so is this, though. Can we get both? I don't think so. I think, yeah, it's a little too expensive for us to get both. So I'm going to go for this because that's just ridiculously powerful. Um, and it doesn't look like we'll have enough, even if we re-roll, to buy another relic. So we could purge something, but I think I'd rather save our money here. That didn't work out as well for us, but getting that sigiled seaweed is huge. That's a 50% chance to... Oh my god. Guys, it's like 90 degrees here, which is pretty hot for where we live, and I've got like this fat little cat sleeping on my feet, and she heats me up even more. Seraph has recruited many to his cause, both winged and clipped. These followers have grouped together to inundate you with sheer numbers. Oh gosh, it's the stealth one. That's great. Uh, actually, this works out okay for us, because if we can stall it for long enough to get... You know, if it runs out of stealth by the time it hits our top floor, it's probably dead. Uh, Sycophant gives plus two attack to all friendly units when it dies, and then Clipped Guardian is 5 and 95. That's not a huge thing. Non-boss enemy units restore all health when they move up a floor. Not a chance. Not a chance. We've already discovered that that's just not a great one to have. I mean, in this instance, it's kind of okay, because we're pretty confident that this guy will just rail anything that hits the top floor. Um, but I'm still not fond of it, and I don't intend to do it. Let's go down here and play this. Titan's Gratitude here. Uh, oh boy, everything got plus attack, so that was a huge mistake on my part. But I think we'll actually potentially survive it here. Yes. The main thing here is to protect our champion. I would have liked to put those morsels up there, but protecting our champion is a bigger deal. Uh, and I basically got really, really lucky because of Shade Lamp there. Shade Lamp saved me in that regard. We just silenced like half of this row. That's how strong that silence is, guys. It's insane. Um, okay. So... I guess we do this... into this, which will give us some morsels. Or we could even do... That's a lot of decisions right here. Um, I feel like we definitely want to do this to get morsels, though. Let's just go for it. We go for that. This guy's gonna get frostbite. We'll get a couple of morsels. We'll get one that we can use just to put in front of this guy and one that we can use up here that will not do enough damage to kill that guy, unfortunately. So we're gonna miss out on a little bit of money. I didn't see the Cherub spawn. I've gotta pay better attention to that, honestly. Uh, okay. Sure, we'll hit that just to draw another. Oh, that would have been so much better, okay. Uh, at least this guy's fueled up for one round now. We really need to start getting more consistent fuel going his way, though, because the fact that we've had to tank with our our fuel is not a good thing. Uh, this is a lot better. We want that to tank. That makes a lot more sense. Go ahead and Shade Splitter here. Gives us a card draw and a morsel. Put that morsel up here to fuel him. Um, and that'll give us a draw in and of itself. We have a couple of cards here that are strong, but they do cause discard. I feel like perhaps we want to go for a drain on 
something just to play a spell here. I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point what we put it on. Let's put it on that. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, cast another spell to get some more draw. Didn't quite get what we needed there, though. Would have been nice to draw into that offering spell a little bit sooner so we could have done the daze the floor and then discard the hand and got the trigger, but that didn't happen. Good news is we do have two of these now to give to our beefy boy on the top. And we have enough targets down here that we can Antumbra Assault to give us some more, which is really nice. Uh, and finally, we actually have our tank unit that we want on the bottom floor as well, which is really good. Uh, let's go for that, and I guess give ourselves a Frozen Sap? Sure. Sure, a Frozen Sap makes sense. Uh, let's put the best of these up here that we can, so that one's going to make sense. We do still have an Antumbra Assault to play, which we'll do right there. Um, and then we can play that to encant a little bit more. Play that to get a potential discard trigger. And now, of course, we've got the attack ones that we would have liked to have had before. So we'll put that there. Uh, let's put a health one here just to increase this guy's health a little bit. And then if we can kill something with this, we can get back two energy. But I feel like we're better off saving that until we have exactly one energy and then killing one of these guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and do Titan's Grip. Of course we discard the one card I was going to use. I knew that was going to happen, but I, I figured it was worth the risk. I may be wrong there. Okay, we're just going to let that be then. That's fine. Wrecked. Give him all the fuel, guys. There we go. Fuel that, fuel that big bad boy up. We finally got the tank we wanted on the bottom floor too, which is really nice. This unit being here is actually a problem. A brief respite means that we are going to have a boss coming in very soon. Uh, so for that reason, what I want to do here... Oh, this is tough. It'd be really good to kill all of these units here, but that's not going to happen. Unless, actually, okay, hold on. So we sweep there. And then down here we could Crucible, but that's also not great. Uh, Shade Splitter would give us the chance to get another morsel to feed this guy, which isn't a bad idea. Crucible here is also not a bad idea. Let's do this and Shade Splitter. I think that's actually the best potential combination we have. Uh, that does give us another morsel to feed him, which is great. Which also gives us another draw, which gives us our monument back. That would have been a great way to combo there if we had enemies to shoot. Uh, one of the things I didn't consider when we were talking about this crazy combo... Oh, we can do that, though, so that's nice. Yeah, so we could potentially play out our draw combo next turn, though, which is really nice. Okay, so we saved our pyre. The boss is spawning. We have to survive eight rounds without getting wrecked. That's that's the goal here, is eight rounds without getting wrecked. Uh, we could potentially trigger this off of a discard, but that's also kind of risky. Because if we don't trigger it off, to, off of a discard, we can't actually play it. So, let's do this. Put these guys down because they're free. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. So now we have a guaranteed trigger off of the, the discard. Which means that what we could do here... I can't do this. I wish I could. That would be really good. But we can spend down to one mana right now and be fine. Uh, provided... That is provided one specific thing. We don't accidentally discard this playing something else. So if we were to drain right here, we could potentially accidentally discard that, and that would hurt us a lot. Um, putting this on him three times also buys us three more attacks before he takes damage, which could be more beneficial in the long run than Frenzy is. But Frenzy also gives us that, so that's actually worth more, I think. Let's do that. Okay, there we go. That seems pretty solid. I may just put these morsels down on the second floor in case we get a unit to put in front of them next turn. I probably should have done that with the other morsels we had too, but I wasn't thinking about it at the moment. Okay. Eight rounds with this stealth unit is a huge pain, but at least the unit has frostbite now, so it's got to take some damage in those eight rounds. Uh, how much longer? One, one more turn of stealth, guys. One more turn of stealth. That's actually kind of perfect here. We do this if we really wanted to we could consume one of these like two times which wouldn't be bad 
Uh, we could give him damage shield too, which would wear this unit out even more. How much fuel does he have though? He's got five fuel right now, which isn't great. Uh, we don't really have a way to give him more fuel though at the moment. So whether it's great or not is sort of irrelevant. Uh, we can't use Shroud Spike even, which would be great to give him multiple consumes. So I guess the best bet here is maybe just Shroud Strike this guy. Give him a lot more health and some more shields. Yeah, four damage shields there, so at least this guy's taking damage before he gets to the final floor. And I mean, it's still entirely possible that we find a way to get some morsels for this guy in the next hand. Um, and that would be a big, big boon, I think, as far as keeping him alive. Especially if we can get the damage shield one. Oof. That's a tough hand. That is a very tough hand. Uh, I actually made it so I couldn't put any morsels down. That's a problem. Mistakes were made. But we did get offering trigger there, which is nice. 405 right now, so even if it hits the pyre once, it's going to die. I think we just barely pulled through that. I really wish we would have had the spell weakness before we cast those spells, because it would have been over. But I mean, honestly, I'm okay with it hitting the pyre once and dying. Will it hit the pyre once? It will, because the frostbite won't quite kill it. Okay. It gets one hit on the pyre and then it's gone. Seems good. Collect. What do we have here as options? End of turn, apply Frozen to a random card in your hand. Uh, that could actually play well with our Titan's Claw here. Guardian Stone, Incant, apply Armor 1 to friendly units. Units, 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 units. Um, so what that means is multiple units, which makes this real good. We're gonna take that. Gem Trove is okay. Grovel, add damage shield one. Add two uncommon or rare morsels. Add damage shield one to friendly units. Add four uncommon or rare morsels. That's pretty good. Engine upgrade, trade a capacity for an energy. That doesn't seem as good to me. Um, Grovel is more castable. This is more powerful in general, but we don't, we won't be able to guarantee we have four energy, so I feel like this is better. Until we get another energy crystal, that's better. Uh, Pyre health here is pretty nice. Additionally, there's some extra money over here. I feel like this is probably a better bet. Pyre health seems like a really good idea, especially going into Fell. Going into Fell, we're gonna, this is, this is one of the hardest fights you can possibly have going into Fell. Um, there is some potential to really abuse the large stone here with this alloyed construct. Like, that takes him up to doing a ridiculous amount of damage. If we can just keep feeding him, it works out really, really nicely. I think that's a good idea. Let's go for it. Um, that does mean that his row is obviously only going to have, what, three slots for us to put food in, which is okay. Let's go with upgrade a unit with 10 attack. Uh, that's actually pretty beneficial on this guy, but it would also be beneficial on the Guardian Stone, which currently has zero attack. Um, and then we can give another, or give a unit 25 health, which seems like something that's really good for, once again, the Guardian Stone. Uh, that makes the Guardian Stone rather tanky. We can re-roll here, see what we get. Upgrade a unit with Multi-Strike 1. Okay, folks, he's a house now. He's a house now, we can build around that, let's go. If we can get him on the top floor and we can feed the heck out of him, Fell is done. Fell empowers units with rage. Oh boy, that's that's one of my favorites, except not. Oh my gosh, this cat is making it like really difficult for me to stand correctly because she just plopped. Hi, bubs. Oh, that's a starting hand. Uh, that's actually a really difficult starting hand to play though. I want to put Icy Silophyte right here, but I think it's more important that we get the Alloyed Construct out, to be honest. So that seems good. Let's go. Alloyed Construct obviously not going to be attacking this round. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, she raged it. Oh, come on. And that is how you lose the round. How am I this terrible? I am like ridiculously disappointed in myself right now. I, I can't, 
I can't accurately explain how disappointed I am in my myself at the moment for making that stupid decision. How did I not see that? I was so excited about the starting hand we got, I just didn't pay close enough attention, and now I'm going to pay for it. Uh, even if we do this here, I don't think he's going to survive. We could put the offering monument in front of him. That's actually a good play. Okay. That's something. We still have to kill something before we get a morsel, and so far that's not happening. If we can just start getting morsels, though. Like, if we can just get some morsels, we'll be okay, honestly. That's what it comes down to. We need to get morsels. Gosh, the decay time on that rage is killing me right now. Um, alright. Is there anything useful I can do here? I can kill this. That's gonna give us four morsels, which is huge. Lifesteal morsel seems good. Um, attack morsel seems good. Another attack morsel seems very good. We can go down here, give a spell frozen. Let's give it to this so that we can get it for zero next turn. In the meantime, we can damage shield right here and get ourselves some morsels. Okay, that's not a bad play. We are full up on morsels on that row though. So what can we do with these morsels we now have? Um, we can give life, steal, and health to our frontline unit here. That seems pretty good. Uh, this guy, once he's fueled, should literally just steamroll everything. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be good. As long as he survives, like, the biggest problem for him next round is that he can't die. If he dies, we're in trouble. Oof. Oof. Lots of pyre damage there. That doesn't feel good. I definitely feel like this is the right play right here. Titan's Tooth that floor to preserve this guy. Uh, he's actually going to go up 35 health, which is great. That's, that's kind of exactly what we want. Uh, is there anything else that we can get a lot of value out of as far as creating a new... I mean, we could put this guy down right here just to be tanky and provide a little bit more damage. If there was ever a time that we needed this train steward, it's right now. So I think we'll go for that. Uh, in addition, Antumbra Assault here on anything seems okay. It's not going to kill anything. We already know that. That's kind of a problem, but it's not the end of the world. Actually, if we do it there, is it going to help? It's not going to help much if we do it there. If we do it here... That's six more damage, so this guy is going to survive with 15 health. But he also has an incant that grants 10 armor, so it doesn't matter if we start casting spells to try to get through to him faster, we're just going to get messed over anyway. Uh, the reality is, he's probably going to survive. Actually, oh, he has sweep, doesn't he? He's silenced. I like that. Uh, so what we're going to do... We need 15 more damage. These uh, magma morsels here seem real good. Oh, ho, ho. you guys see what I see, right? Like, okay, so here there's not a whole lot we can do to actually save this guy. He's probably, oh, he's just gonna die. That was like a big mistake. I keep making really stupid mistakes, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, 12, so that's 22 and 12, so 32 damage. We would need to be able to provide him with what, four points of armor to get him through it? We get one point of armor every time we play this. Or play a spell with this. So I think maybe we go like that. Um, oof. Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling here to find a way to get to get this guy to survive, but I don't think there is one. I mean, if we draw a zero-cost spell here, there's a chance, but it's still not a good chance. We'd have to kill something with this to get energy back to really have a good chance. That just doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Yeah, alright, so that's unfortunate. 
Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We can play it for zero damage. Okay, so if we do play our Shroud Spike right here... Oh, we can't. We can't Shroud Spike because we don't have a morsel to eat. That's super annoying. Okay, so... I guess there's really just no way for us to come out on top here. We're going to lose this guy. And that was a really bad play on my part. But it is what it is. We still can win this fight. We still can win this fight. I just want to... I just want to be clear that that is still a possibility here. Why did he not go up to the next floor? I, I'm not sure why he didn't go to the next floor. Oh, he did. Okay. I was going to say, like... I'll take it. I'm not going to complain about it, but I'm not sure why that happened. Oh, good. You raged a thing that I don't care about. Uh, Antumbral Assault is not going to provide us with any morsels here, unfortunately. I could, though. Let's go right here. Um, Titan's Tooth here... ...doesn't give us what we need, necessarily. I mean, Frozen Lance gives us a draw, so that's something. This is actually really good. Gives us a damage shield and two more morsels. So the main thing we're banking on is this last floor stopping everything. That's, that's all we have. It's either the last floor... Oh, he swept! Oh, he killed all of our morsels! Why? That's so obnoxious. That is so obnoxious. That sweep is so obnoxious, guys. I can't even explain how obnoxious that is. Um, okay. So let's start by playing zero cost so that we can get them out of the hand. Morsels here make sense. Um, the monument we could put right here to give us... Why does it say he only has one health? Oh, is the mi oh, the minus five health is permanent, so even if we get him back, it's really not that big of a value. <laughs> okay, well, that's a, that's a learning experience in and of itself right there. Um, what can we do with him then? That's any use at all. We put that there to give us some extra spell... Yeah, 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 you guys know what I mean. Um, we can Titan's Gratitude here and hope for the... Yes, we got the right discard. Beautiful. Okay, so we got some extra morsels out of that, which is good, because we can put a damage shield morsel here, which is nice. Uh, and then down here we can put an attack morsel. Seems alright. This next group coming up to this floor, that's that's the biggest problem I can foresee for us right now. If they get up here, we're going to have some, some little issues. It may not be a problem, though. It really just depends on how hard we can hit. Oh, that's not good. That's a problem. 20 health left on the pyre, guys. This is potentially our last fight, because I keep making really dumb mistakes. Okay, uh, let's start by going with this guy. And then we can preserve. And we'll preserve this, because it's really the only good thing to preserve. Ugh. Once again, just not a great situation to be in as far as what we're drawing and what we have. Uh, our low damage spells that haven't been upgraded are not really helping us. The X damage spells are not helpful here because there's no units that are weak. Uh, we could just put this guy in front to eat damage, and I think that's actually a good idea because it protects him a little bit. And then after that, I really don't think there's much we can do that's going to grant us much value here. Uh, we need to kill a unit in order to be able to get some more morsels, and we can't do that, so... I guess that to get a little more armor. We do have a good portion of armor right here, though. That's kind of nice. And we can play that for zero just to gain more armor. Okay, we got two more morsels from that, and they don't have any sweep units left, which is particularly good. We're also applying spell weakness to Fell at this point, which is really nice. As long as we can keep two units from making it to the top, we're in a good spot. Oh, okay, this worked out okay. This actually worked out okay, and here's why. Uh, the real catch here is if we can get a really good morsel for up here. And I'd, I'd like to get one that has, like, damage shield. That would be the best. Um, but right now, that doesn't look like it's going to happen because we don't really have a way to do that. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this morsel down. I'm going to put this morsel down. 
And then I'm going to probably Shroud Spike him to get three consumptions of the Morsel there. Because I do think that that's going to be our best overall bet. We're only going to do 63 damage on this floor. That doesn't surprise me. Um, yeah, I think this is best. So which one has attack and which one has health? Uh, actually, how much damage does Fel do? Fel does 20 per strike. So right now he will survive three attacks. Uh, consuming a health morsel six times would give 24 more health. So he'll survive even more attacks, doing 180 per attack. Uh, she has like 1,200 health, so... Yeah, that's, that's a lot of math. That's a lot of math, and that's honestly a little bit rough. So let's do... On the other hand, six times four attack. It's another 24 attack, so that's 84 times three. We're looking at, you know, what? 240 damage per survived attack. That actually seems really, really good because that means we only need like five attacks to, to win. Um, okay, let's do that. And he has plenty of fuel now. Plenty of fuel. He's going to have even more attack when that round ends. Uh, we will kill a unit here, so we'll get two more morsels, which are going to give him even more attack. I would like some health morsels here just to help him. But even if we manage to get, like, one damage uh, shield morsel, that'll be perfect. She also has a ton of spell weakness now. So I think between the spell weakness and everything else, we should be able to get her. I'm not going to guarantee anything, but it feels like we should be able to get her. I mean, that is just a silly feeling, though, right? Well, that makes things better, doesn't it? Um, so we could damage shield here just to guaranteedly kill her. Like, that'll just kill her, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the other option is we could sap her to reduce her damage a little bit. We could also play the guard here somewhere. But I honestly feel like... Hmm. If we do this and we discard the Prism Dust, I'm going to kick myself really, really hard. I think this is where we go. Because with our damage and him having a couple of damage shields... Oh, that's only going to absorb one attack, though. It's not going to actually absorb two because she double attacks. However, we did get this, which is also going to help. Very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, additional health seems to be our main option here, so we'll go for that. Uh, and we do get a big multiplier on that, and she's dead. We actually won the round, guys. I don't know how we survived that as much as I misplayed, but we did. Holy moly. That's insane. Okay, he's not as bad as I thought. He's not as bad as I thought. Oh my gosh. All right. We almost died, but in the end, we survived. We get a rare pack here. Uh, Kindle is extremely powerful. Enhance all spells in hand with plus five magic power. This is kind of good, but I'm not sure how good. Kindle is extremely powerful because it allows us to play into our other X cost spells, so I'm gonna grab that. Um, and then here, we definitely want more energy per turn. That's that's a big deal. I can't believe we made it this far, guys. Um, so do we want to duplicate a spell, Concealed Caves and Pyre? That's probably our best bet here. So I'm going to get the Pyre Remains. I'm going to check out Concealed Caves first. The Bone Shaker stops near the abandoned remains of a train looking to belong to a merchant. The train still seems to have some wares. A few remaining goods from the clans of the Awoken, Stygian Guard, and Umbra are out in the open for taking. But taking something may cause the abandoned remains to fall to peace. Which clan's artifact do you take from the collapsing train? Um, I feel like an... So it's an Umbra consumable card, a Stygian consumable card, or an Awoken consumable card. Let's take a look at our deck and see what potential consumable cards we could get. So this is an Umbra consumable card. It's pretty good. I wouldn't mind having another one of those. Uh, Awoken has... I can't remember what for consumables. I guess it's almost just a roll the dice and see what we get kind of thing. I feel like Umbra is probably the best choice, though. Got what we wanted. I'll take that. That's a great card. You carefully retrieve the item from the wreckage, trying your best not to disturb the train any further, but the train collapses under its own weight, making the other items of, valuable, or of value impossible to obtain. Okay. So, that's fine. Let's 
go ahead and get our champion first. Damage spells cast on this floor cost minus two or Frostbite 20. I feel like Frostbite 20 is a better choice. Uh, we do still have to worry about the low health of that unit though. And now we need, or we get to duplicate one unit, any, or one card rather, any one card. What would we duplicate if we could duplicate any one card? Uh, I do feel like Grovel would be a good option, even though it's not upgraded because it's just that strong. I would also accept Guardian of the Unnamed. So we could have two Guardians, one on two different floors. Um, what other options would be really good? Guardian Stone isn't a bad option either since he only takes one capacity. Uh, having a second Kindle wouldn't be bad. But I think that I'm probably going to go with Grovel. Because Grovel is just really, really strong. That that damage shield plus the two morsels makes a big difference for us if we're having trouble getting into the fight. Uh, that verifiably helped us kind of get back in that last match. Conduit Masters. Wing Conduits have mastered the use of their armor and grant their ability, or the allies, the ability to strike multiple times. Remove the Conduits and this power will be removed too. Okay, so we need to kill these guys. They have six health. Other friendly units on the same floor gain a bonus. The bonus is multi-strike. Oh my god, are you kidding me? There's no way we're doing this trial. That trial's insane. We really, really need to hope for silences on those units. Of course, we didn't get one. Would've been nice, but we didn't get one. Um, oof. This is actually super bad for us. There's like no good play here, except for maybe abandoning floor one and just going to floor two. That's pretty tough. That's pretty tough, but it does seem like the right answer. Uh, otherwise, we're just throwing away a unit. We're going to abandon floor one and go for floor two. And then we're going to hit this, that, and also go for a morsel. And for the morsel, we'll just put it here to give us one extra energy next round. Really? Really life? Great. Okay. Well, now we're not going to get our tank here that we want, so that's kind of a pain, but... And it is what it is. There's not a whole lot we can do about that except for accept it. Uh, this is decent, though. Let's do that. Let's also Shade Splitter to get an incant. We can do another Shade Splitter for an incant, or we can drain something, which is actually probably better. Uh, I'm going to put a morsel right there. Ooh, so now we have <laughs> even more interesting options here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and probably just Frenzied Swarm. We are going to miss out on the money from that floor. Oh, or maybe we're not. No, we are. We are, because I can't cast that. Okay, well, we're just going to keep cycling through our deck. We did apply Spell Weakness and Frostbite there, which is nice. Okay, so this time... I don't know how that regained health, but it did. There's no way for us to... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yes, there is. Okay, one, kill that, get four Morsels. I like it. Uh, let's go Damage Shield Morsel there. Let's also go Damage Shield Morsel here. And then we'll put some Attack Morsels here. And then on this floor, we can also go Preserve and hit that with Preserve so that we can hold on to it for as long as we need to. Uh, we have four mana left. I'm going to actually use two of it to Damage Shield here and also give us some more Morsels. Uh, sure, we use another Damage Shield Morsel there. Um, and then with this, right now we can kill a six health unit and get two energy back, which seems pretty good. We can go ahead and grovel here as well. Get us another incant trigger, frozen lance. Uh, this time I'm playing a lot better, I think. Okay, that's all good. I mean, that guy went down pretty easily. That's awesome. Oh, that worked out very much perfectly. Okay. 
Okay, I think we're we're kind of in this now, guys. I think we're kind of in this now. Like, we actually have a pretty solid chance here. Uh, in order to get that chance on the way, though, we do need to kill a unit. Trying to figure out the easiest way to do that at the lowest cost is going to be sort of our number one priority here. And we need to kill a unit so that we can get a morsel. I feel like the best unit we could go after is something down here using Titan's Tooth. Which is still kind of garbage because it means we are going to burn a lot of energy here. I really have a choice though. It's either that or we don't get morsels until after the round, which isn't useful. Um, so we'll do that. We'll get our morsels. Uh, and then we'll put a Guardian Stone down right here. And we'll hit Titan's Gratitude here. Of course, we discard the one thing I'd like to have held on to. It is what it is, though. Got some extra armor. Our big beefy boy is ready to tear things up. And now he's got lifesteal. Yeah, this is this is going pretty well. It was a rough start because we couldn't defend the first floor at all. But now we're in a pretty good place, in my opinion. Uh, unfortunately, unless we find a way to kill something here, which we might be able to with this. Yes, if we play a spell, we can get this guy down. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that out just to kill that guy so that we can put him down, uh, which is great because it does give us access to the rest of this. We also get a morsel here, so put that morsel down uh, we do have another offering monument which honestly we can put on floor one and it doesn't matter that much um this seems good and gives us some morsels okay then we can put those morsels where they belong right up here and i get us life life steal and damage shield on this guy because you know he's not good enough already guys and then we'll titan's gratitude here get our incant triggers this is going very well. We might actually win this one. We might actually win this run. It honestly wouldn't surprise me if we did at this point. Which is a crazy turnaround from how many times we've been close on this run. Uh, this guy is just a huge pain. He has been silenced, though. As has this guy, which is perfect. We do want to make sure we kill this guy before they get to the next floor, though, because if the silence, you know, falls off, uh, we're in trouble. And I, I don't know how that works. Does silence fall off? It may not. It may just stay on permanently, but I think it does. Um, and I'd rather not take the chance. Like, that's what it comes down to is, do I think it does enough to take the risk? The answer to that question is invariably no. Uh, so let's go damage shield morsel here as well. We have one more? We do. Life steal and damage. I love it. Uh, and then we come down here and do this. Bam. All of your things are going to die here. And we get one more damage shield morsel which we can't put anywhere, unfortunately. We do have one energy left to do what we want with, so I think with that one energy, uh, we actually don't want to do anything, because anything we do here is... Well, I guess we want to do this. We want to trigger incant. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and I guess we'll see if they... if the silence falls off. If the silence doesn't fall off, then we'll know for future reference that it doesn't fall off, but... Okay, it doesn't look like it's falling off. That's kind of nice, actually. Uh, let's go ahead and use this. Put it on our Prismal Dust. We can Antumbra Assault here just to play a spell. Uh, we do have some more units to put up here. That's going to give us the ability to do that. We can also play that to get even more armor on everyone. And now we're in a position where we can legitimately just Prismal Dust for a lot. Uh, and both of our Prismal Dusts are frozen, so I'm gonna... I mean, he's dead on this floor. <laughs> I'll just Prismal Dust here, because he's dead on this floor, so who cares? Seems good. And he's... You know why he's dead, guys? It's the Frostbite. It's the Frostbite. It's actually sad, though, because we have our big boy up top ready to go. Like, he would have eaten this dude alive. And instead, we're just gonna Frostbite him to death. That is crazy. So, like, game plan A for us is Frostbite. Game plan B is that guy. It also really seems like when we put our, our champion on the second floor with Frostbite, it works out better than being on the first floor. Uh, Two-turn boss rush plus 20%. We got our money. We got our packs. Let's see what we get in our packs. This isn't really great. 
Uh, it's not bad, it's just not great. This could be useful, but I feel like Preserve is actually going to be really good for us here. Mainly because it's a free spell that will trigger Incant and also let us hold on to something. Cave in, descend friendly and enemy units on this floor. Uh, so this is actually really, really strong because you can break the game a little bit with it. Uh, I do like that a lot. <clears throat> that one's decent, that one's decent, but I feel like cave the the choice here for sure. And I think we're on the last boss. That's it. It's Seraph the Diligent next. Uh, so the heal. Uh, Seraph is going to consume our spells. Of course. That's that's awesome. That's exactly what we need. Um, so here we can double a card. We can also upgrade our magic. And then we can head to the Trinket Merchant. Here we get a little bit more money before we go to the Trinket Merchant, which is probably better off overall. Um, but being able to reduce the cost of Cave In would actually make it a far more useful card, I think. So this is very promising, but so is this. What units would we upgrade if we were upgrading units? I mean, honestly, none. We just go to the artifact shop or the trinket shop. So let's do this. Let's get our pyre strength. Let's get some coins and let's go to the trinket shop and see if we can get something nice. Your pyre gets plus 40 health. That seems pretty good to me, guys. Um, plus three magic power is decent. It does mean that with our Antumbra assaults, we could kill those six health units. That being said, I don't know if we're going to face any six health units in the boss fight. I don't think we will. I do think that this is going to be overall maybe better. However, that depends on whether or not units are actually reaching the pyre, which they may not be. So I think we'll go with this. There probably were better options, but I think that's an okay option. Um, and then over here, we can't afford to buy one 20 cost one. Oh, well, that's pretty. I wonder what we're going to put that on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'd love to gain even more armor. Four armor per spell seems pretty good. <laughs> the cat is grumbling at me because I'm trying to, like, reposition my feet because I've been standing for, like, an hour and 20 minutes now. Uh, Seraph the Diligent, the end is near. The Great Trader will devour your spells. You better bring more of them if you hope to succeed. The first spell card played each turn gets consumed. Okay, so that's, that's painful, but it is what it is. Uh, honestly, if we consume our junkie cards first, it's not a big deal. Oh, that, that wasn't cool. What is that? Your pyre takes one damage. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, game. Thank you for that. I, I really appreciate that. It's kind of kind of nice of you to be that painfully evil. Um, So choices here. I mean, it seems pretty clear that we set up on the second floor. I don't feel like this is a good first floor setup right here. And I think we set up like that, and then we shade splitter. Oh, good, we drew a Vengeful Shard. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Hey, look at that, and a Guardian Stone. That is a pretty solid first floor setup. We'll take the one damage to the Pyre, because one damage is hardly going to make a difference. Now I really, really hope that we draw our AoE spell here, because that's going to help. Didn't get it. Uh, so Antumbra Assault we did get, though, and this will help, too, because it will reduce the incoming damage considerably. So let's go ahead and do that. That's going to give us some triggers there. It will get consumed. We already know that. That's just the thing we're going to have to contend with. Uh, we're going to put down our alloyed construct here, and then we're going to try to give him the best possible morsels available. So a lifesteal morsel makes sense. Um, so does a damage morsel and another damage morsel. And then right here... We can kill another unit, get two energy back by hitting this guy, but we can do that with only one energy left. So let's Vengeful Shard to clear it. Mind Collapse to kill that guy. That actually worked out pretty well for us. Uh, we do have one more Morsel. Can we put it somewhere useful? We could put it right here. And then we can hit this. And then we can hit this. I'm okay with that. We also have uh, Frostbite on Seraph right now, which is good. Taking one damage to our pyre, once again, not the end of the world. Being able to fully gorge our unit is huge here. Uh, and there we did kill a unit, so if we hadn't already gotten our trigger for the morsels, we would have gotten it right there. Oh, that silence artifact is literally, like, my favorite artifact in the game. I, I would strongly argue that it is the best artifact in the game, bar none. Uh, how much health is on our draw guy here? So we'd have to play three spells to get through it. I mean, that doesn't count. 
Um, we would consume Titan's Gratitude there, which isn't great. Oh, if our first spell played gains consume and it already has consume, how does that affect it, I wonder? Let's do that. Nice! Okay, so that's a way around it. That is legitimately a way around it. Um, sap only lasts for a certain number of turns, so who do we want to play that on? Probably that guy. Okay. Doing pretty well here. If we can play one more spell... Oh, that would be rough. <laughs> that would be rough to combine those two floors. That is a lot of damage coming from them. Uh, it would be okay to do this one, but it would mean we would not be able to pump this guy up anymore, which isn't great. Uh, so, at this point, I mean, we could honestly just cave in this floor. Okay. Oh, it didn't trigger the draw. That's what I was after. Okay, well, mistakes were made. I don't know where we put the Guard of the Unnamed. Um, he's really, really strong, but if we put him here, he's just going to die. And we would want to put him here, but we don't have the space, so we'll just let him pass for right now. Okay, we got some morsels. We didn't get to feed him la that last round, which is problematic. But I mean, even if we're just feeding him every other round, that's still not terrible, you know? Uh, especially if we can ensure that with those feedings, he's able to kill this entire floor, which is very, very likely. Uh, let's do this. Let's consume this. Gives us a kill, gets us some morsels, seems good. Uh, let's go with a lifesteal morsel. And then two more attack morsels. Uh, we could put our draw guy down here just to sort of chump, but that literally doesn't accomplish anything, so who cares? Um, right here, we can play this. Choose a card to gain Frozen. Yo, yo. Oh no, that would still trigger. Okay. You can't blame me for wanting to try, guys. I was hoping if we held on to that... I mean, sure, we'll give that frozen. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I probably should have done this in a different order, but I'm going to put this here and also Crucible Extension this floor. Could have Crucible Extension here for an incant trigger. I probably should have done that. Um, and we're still going to lose this unit even doing all that, so that's unfortunate. Isn't he endless, though? I think he's endless. I can't say for sure. He is endless. Right on. Okay, so that works out just fine. Now, the main thing we have to worry about is keeping that guy alive. Because if for some reason uh, we don't manage to keep this guy alive, like if he dies, we lose everything that we've invested in him. And that's just a no-win situation for us at all. Uh, so that will at least eat a hit now. The next spell we play will be consumed. Fine with consuming that spell. It's probably the best spell for us to consume. Play a Morsel Miner. We redraw our Offering Monument. Play another Morsel Miner. Or no, that's not a Morsel Miner. That's a Entumbra Morsel. My bad. Um, okay. So Damage Shield here potentially lets him absorb an extra shot and gives us some more Morsels. Damage Shield here... Protects him, but it doesn't matter because he's just going to wipe the floor with everything anyway. Uh, I think what we want to do here is... Oh, yeah, you guys know what we want to do here now. I mean... Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, this is the only answer at this point. Okay, so everything's dazed, frozen, and, uh, or dazed and frostbitten. Seems good. Including Seraph himself, or herself, whichever it is. Uh, there we go. Come on, clear the row, man. We need you. We need you to do your job. Oh, he whiffed one. He missed one. Didn't get him. That's okay. It's okay. He's still getting really, really fed here. We still have a ton of frostbite damage going out. Uh, take a little on the pyre. That's all right. We can still win this. The main thing right now is just keeping our middle row alive, which is actually happening primarily because of this offering monument. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of silly when you think about it, guys. Like I'm, I'm not kidding. This is just a, it's a joke in a way. It's just kind of a joke. 
Um, so whatever we play next is going to be consumed. That's, that's something to keep in mind here, which means that we want to be very considerate of what we're playing. So I'm going to play that just to get us some morsels. More damage, more health, more health, more health. Um, and then potentially go with this, get us a damage shield and some more morsels. Can't put any more morsels on that top floor yet, though. Oh no, this is bad. Uh, actually, it might be survivable here. We're gonna take some pyre damage for it, but we might be able to survive here. Oh, nice, okay, cool. We kept our champion there. That was a, a slight miscalculation. By casting those spells, I lost the thing that was tanking for our champion. Oh yeah. Just keep eating, my friend, just keep eating. Oof, that's, that's starting to get a little rougher. We're definitely starting to get a little bit rougher. We need to do a lot of damage on this floor for this to work. And he just adds units to the floor, which is super, super reasonable and not at all a little broken. Uh, so let's cast this. Okay, if we can get that to trigger or we can otherwise find a way to power that, that'll make a huge difference here. Um... It doesn't look like that's going to happen, though. Sorry, guys, I'm just repositioning my feet a little bit because they're really, really sore at this moment. Uh, let's go for maybe Offering here. That'll kill a unit. I mean, Offering here honestly seems better, but we don't have the, the energy to do it. This is going to be really, really sad if we actually lose right here, and it's mainly just because these guys get through. I don't think that's necessarily going to happen. I don't think they have the damage to win there, but it is possible and it's kind of scary. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that guy has 91 health. He gets three strikes. Oh, come on. Come on, we were so close, guys. So close. We had a winning top floor if we would have just survived until Seraph came down. So close. All right, well, we leveled up Stygian. We got Ancient Synergy. Deal damage to the front enemy unit equal to two times the number of spells in your deck three times. That seems good. Uh, the... The consuming, the first thing we cast thing was pretty hard. Shadow Eater, restore 10 health when he gorges, deal 10 damage to enemy units. Whoa, that's powerful. Whoa, that's powerful. Prism Retrieval, consume, draw a unit and enhance it with plus five times attack and minus X energy cost. That's pretty good too. Wow. All right, so we got some good unlocks. We did do pretty well there. Uh, set some new records for ourselves. We finished leveling the Stygian Guard. The only thing left is Umbra and Melting Remnant. So that'll probably be our next video. Um, that being said, we got really, really close to completing that one. And I, I honestly think maybe I'm... Like, I know I made a lot of mistakes there, guys. But I think part of it, too, is just not having all the cards unlocked. Because there are some really, really strong cards. Although I know for a fact that my, my friend Lazy there is able to climb without having everything unlocked. Because he's just really good at this stuff. Anyways... Next time, we will do a little bit better. I mean, this was a lot better than we've done the last couple times. We almost won it here. Next time, we're going to win it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel. And we will see you next time. Bye!